I'm James Lynch, and this is my stock report for UFC Vegas 91, where I take a look at the biggest winners and losers from the event, and the thumbnail always gives it away, like I say, uh, but Alex Perez to me was the biggest stock riser on this card, huge win, getting a finish in the second round over Matthias Nicolau uh, as an underdog as well, if you remember uh, the line, I did think closed uh, with Nicolau being a slight favorite here at minus 180, Perez was the dog, and look, let's look at the optics of this, right, Alex Perez has had some really bad luck, he's had more canceled fights and fights that haven't gone his way than actual uh, fights he's taken uh, taken part in over the last couple of years here. I mean, it's just an absolute mess. Um, but the big question with him is, you know, could he get over the hump? You know, we saw him lose key fights against really good opposition. But then, you know, the wins that he had didn't exactly age so well as far as some of the names he fought. And it's not really his fault. It's, you know, you got to fight who you're given. But Nikolai was a good test here. I know Nikolai was coming off a loss and a layoff. But still, uh, for Perez to go out there and finish him uh, really reminds, I think, the flyweight division that he is a contender in this weight class. And again, um, you know, that disappointing fight against Mokayev, a fight which I think there was a chance for him to win that. And he doesn't end up doing it here. Nice way to rebound against Nikolai. Remember, he took this on short notice as well. It's supposed to be uh, Nikolai and Manel Kopp. So uh, in steps in Perez. He, he, uh, he gets a huge boost here tonight by getting a knockout in the main event. That's the other thing we got to realize here. This was a main event, so, you know, there's going to be more eyeballs. Alex Perez, very well positioned in the flyweight division getting this win. So uh, you got to mention him as one of the big stock risers on this card. Okay, let's get to the rest of the card and the other stock risers on this card. And again, I think this one is uh, pretty obvious here, uh, but you got to go with Guskov getting the win over Ryan Spann. Uh, remember, made his debut, what was it, last year, uh, lost and has won two straight now, two finishes. Very encouraging there, having that first round submission loss against Uzdemir uh, last September, but now rebounding with two straight wins, two finishes as well. That's going to catch the attention of that division right now, light heavyweight, which is a uh, bit of musical chairs, uh, you know, at the top of, of there uh, with, with what's happened with the title over the last couple of years. Alex Pereira being the champion, but Guskov, a nice addition here, uh, 31 years old, and again, beating a guy like Ryan Spann, who, uh, in my opinion, um, you know, Ryan has sort of been on the cusp. It's like he'd win a couple good fights, and then he'd lose a few. A little bit of inconsistency here, but for him to go out there and finish him in the second round, very impressive for Guskov. So he's another guy who, in my opinion, stock has risen a lot uh, after this event. Uh, another name we're going to look at here, we're going to go all the way down to the card. Uh, Euros Medic. Um, look, he was a favorite going in. Actually, I think he was a pretty big favorite here. What was he at? Uh, he was minus 300. So he's expected to win, but here's what we do here at the Stock Report. Um, we look at the type of performance he got. To go out there and finish Tim Means in the first round, and don't get me wrong, Tim Means, not exactly a young guy, 40 years old, but look at the last time Tim Means was finished this quickly. You see a lot of second round or uh, you know later uh, stoppage losses. I guess Nico Price, maybe a couple years ago, he got finished in the first round, but not very typical of Tim Means, who for the most part has been pretty durable. Um, you know, Even going the distance with Max Griffin. For Medic to go and do this, and for Medic as well, just... You know, being a guy that, you know, again, had a bit of a, a shaky, uh, you know, UFC start losing that fight to Jalen Turner. But it seems like he's in the right weight class now. Again, rebounding from that loss to Orobai. Um, this was a big win for him. So he's another guy whose stock certainly went up. I think there's a lot of promise here with him going out there and finishing a veteran like Tim Means uh, in the uh, in the first round. So that's like, you know, again, because this is what people will say. You know, obviously he fought a guy who's supposed to beat. But if you go out there and get a first round finish, that's very impressive. We have to do make note of that. So Medic, for me, was one of the big ones as well. Let's talk about a couple honorable mentions on this card as well as far as uh, big winners. Uh, we got to mention uh, David Onama uh, on this card who was an underdog in this fight. I saw a lot of people picking Jonathan Pierce. Uh, I like the Onama side. He ends up coming through. Big win there for Onama who has not fought that much. If you remember the fight previously, uh, Gabriel Santos um, back in, um, in in June of last year. So he's been off for a bit. So to come back and beat a veteran like Jonathan Pierce, very impressive. Uh, another name we got to mention, Chris Taco Padilla uh, getting it done uh, as opponent Mr. His weight um, and he gets a first round finish. Um, so, you know, again, uh, taking this on short notice, getting the win. Um, very, very impressive there for Chris Padilla. And then how about Austin Hubbard as well? A guy who, uh, you know, second stint with the UFC, uh, lost the tough finale to Kurt Holoba in a fight that I thought he was doing quite well in um, and, and gets a win here. This is another fight where I saw a lot of people picking the other side. Uh, so he comes through. Uh, first UFC win for him since 2021 because, of course, he's had two stints now in the UFC. So good to see Austin Hubbard getting the win column there. So those are the uh, big stock risers here, and, and we'll talk about that uh, on, on the other side once we're done this. Uh, of course, we got to talk about the stock draft droppers the fighters who in my opinion took took a bit of a hit as far as their stock now this one was tough because this wasn't like a big card so you know there weren't maybe some bigger names than, than normal and again let me know in the comments your picks uh, for the biggest stock risers stock droppers but to me Ryan Spann was one of the big ones here again Spann 32 years old a guy that we thought at some point could have had some promise here but that's three straight losses you know the Anthony Smith fight was a split 
You know, again, it was a bit closer here, uh, but now he's been finished in two of his last three fights. That's not a good look. I mean, this was a guy back in 2022, knocked out Dominic Reyes, beat Kutalaba. It looked like he was finally gaining some momentum, and now he's lost three in a row. I don't think he'll get released, but certainly Ryan Spann will be used going forward, you would think, for the UFC is building up other guys. And uh, they kind of did that here with Gus Cobb. But again, he was favored in this fight. He was supposed to win. Spann doesn't win. I don't really know where he goes from here, but I think the UFC will give him another fight. But Ryan Spann, one of the big stock droppers. We have to mention Matthias Nicolau as well. He was in the main event. He was favored. He loses this fight. He's now been finished in a couple of fights now. Uh, that's back-to-back -back, uh, TKO losses. Are there chin issues there? I think there's a case for it at this point. Um, you know, look look at the win streak he had prior to this. Now two in a row. Uh, he's certainly, uh, you know, in the middle of the pack now at flyweight. Um, not that old either, 31. I suppose he could turn it around, but uh, it's going to be pretty tough when you're fighting, uh, you know, when you're coming off uh, two straight knockout loss. So again, Nicolau, another one who took a hit. And then the other name we got to mention here, Jonathan Pierce, again, favored in this fight. Uh, there was a point when he was on a good win streak here, right? We saw, I think, what, five in a row, uh, five fight win streak. And now he's lost two in a row here. This is, a, I think, a winnable fight for him against Onama. Doesn't get it done. JSP now back to back losses. Uh, we'll see where he goes from here. Again, 31 years old, a bit of time to figure things out. But uh, that's sort of another setback uh, there as well. Uh, I tried to find some honorable mentions as far as disappointments. I don't, I, again, I think for the most part, this card played out like we thought it would. I think the Mayas Machado fight was close. I wouldn't even say that either guy had like a lot of stock going in. Um, yeah, this was just one of those cards where there just wasn't like a lot of notable storylines going in. So as far as like picking something up for the stock report, like for example, like Carney Silva looked great tonight, but like she was supposed to win, you know? So where, where did her stock go? I mean, if she finished Lipsky, maybe we could talk about it being a bigger deal. Same with Denitz. He was a, a favorite going into this one or Denise, uh, the Brazilian. He was expected to win. Austin Lane coming off a loss. Can't really take too much away from there. Victor Henry looked good tonight. Um, you know, he's a guy that maybe consider it, but, uh, you know, also was favored. Uh, what was his betting odds going into this fight? Again, this is something we factor in here. Yeah, it was minus 425. So he did what he was supposed to do. You know what I mean? When, when it comes to odds and all that, that's kind of how we look at these things. So just a quick recap here, guys. Uh, my biggest stock risers, Alex Perez, Guskov and uh, Euros Medic, I thought uh, should take the honors. Uh, honorable mention to Chris Padilla and Austin Hubbard, as well as David Onama. And your biggest stock droppers here, Ryan Spann, Matthias Nicolau, Jonathan Pierce. So as per usual, uh, I want to know what you guys think in the comments section below. Apologies for my voice, by the way. I went to the um, I went to the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, they did like a viewing party for the playoffs, even though the Canucks weren't playing in the arena. So I watched that. So I was yelling at that. And then I had to coach hockey today. So my voice is a little bit off today. So apologies for that uh, in this video. But uh, did, uh, you know, get enough here to do the stock report and uh, making sure I'm getting this up tonight. This, this, I won't be able to release this video every Saturday night, but just so happens this card's on a bit earlier. Was able to get this one up for you guys. So wanted to get this out right away. Again, uh, I'm always trying to get my content up as soon as possible. So uh, yeah, there, there is my stock report. But yeah, just let me know in the comments what your top three stock risers are and your top three stock droppers were. Would love to hear from you. Always love discussing with you guys if you guys have different ideas. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I didn't. Maybe you agree with me. We'll see. Uh, follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Lynch on Sports. I'm James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.